I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we have already spoken about rational numbers and um, their more formal um, introduction by using rational strings of the form where m and n are two integers. Basically, um, this is just a formal introduction. In the real life, we are using slightly different notation, but I want to stick to this format formalism um, and further define arithmetic operations um, with uh, rational numbers. Um, basically, we have defined rational numbers uh, in this formalism um, based on uh, pure uh, expansion to uh, these strings, the regular laws of uh, multiplication of integer numbers. So, if you remember, these are representing actually uh, numerator and denominator of the rational uh, fraction. Um, but in any case, um, right now we are about to define some other operations which are possible with uh, rational numbers. First of all, very briefly, what we have defined as operation of, uh, of operations available with these numbers are the following. If you remember, there is a number 1, which plays the very important role that multiplied by any rational number, it basically results in exactly the same one. Another operation which we have defined um, was uh, an operation of multiplication. When we have two different rational number and multiply them, we will get a, C, B, D. This is just a definition of the operation of uh, multiplication on these formal strings. So forget about the real um, multiplication as you know it in, in the realm of re re rational numbers. This is just a completely different approach with strings. A and B and C and G are integer numbers which we can multiply. So based on these, the multiplication laws of integer numbers, we have defined the operation for rational. And obviously, we um, introduce it in such a way that operations, uh, that the laws of um, commutation and association um, will, will be observed. So you can uh, change the order of multiplication, it will be the same, or if you have three different strings which you're multiplying by each other, um, the sequence is not really important. Okay, this is just a brief repetition of whatever it was before. Now let's continue moving forward towards other arithmetics which we can do with um, these rational strings. Let's call it rational strings, it's a nice name. Okay, so first of all, I would like to talk about reduction of, um, uh, of uh, these strings. Reduction, I mean, is the following. Let's consider the integer m is a result of the multiplication of two other integers, and integer n is the result of multiplication of these integers. What it means is that the k is common um, uh, multiplier, common factor, if you wish, for m and n. Uh, simple examples are 6 and 4. 6 is 2 times 3, and 4 is 2 times 2, uh, which means that the 2 is common. So, I'm trying to approach uh, the problem of reducing the rational number, um, something like, in this particular case, if you have 6 fourths, we know that this is uh, 3 seconds, right? So. I would like to formally introduce this type of um, operation. So, to do that, I actually have to prove that the rational numbers uppercase m over n and lowercase m over n 
are exactly the same. So if k is common factor, common multiplier in both uh, nominator and denominator, then I can reduce by k, and what's left is whatever the results of the division capital M by k, which is M, and capital N by k, which is lowercase n. So how can I prove that? Well, very easily. Since I know that capital M is lowercase m by k, I can put it here. Same for n. Should I have a little bit more room for this? Okay, that's what I have. So how can I prove that? Well, very easily. As we know, um, the operation of multiplication among these rational streams was defined in such a way that m over k and k equals 2 m k 1 times 1 over m k. So, instead of m times k as denominator and n times k as denominator and denominator, I'm writing the multiplication of these two rational strings. In this case, nominator is the same as this and denominator is 1. And in this case, nominator is 1 and denominator is this one. Well, indeed, the multiplication law of these two rational strings states that I have to multiply nominator by, by right, left hand by left hand, right hand by right hand of the vertical bar. So m times k times 1 will be on the left of the bar, and 1 times n times k will be on the right, which is what n times k will be on the right of the bar. So this representation is perfectly lawful but without any problems. Similarly, m times k over 1 I can represent as m over 1 times k over 1. Right? Because again, the multiplication will be m times k over 1 times 1. m times k over 1. And similarly, the next one will be 1 over n times 1 over k. So, so far, I did not break any laws. I just uh, spread all these multiplications into individual pieces. So again, multiplying m times k times 1 times 1 will be m times k here. 1 times 1 times n times k will be here. Great. Now what do we do? Well, very simple. Using the commutative law, I can combine this and this together and, oh, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a vertical bar. And again, if you remember, one of the definitions of these rational strings, when I introduced that, that this formalism was that any number over 1 times 1 over any number will give 1 over 1. So k over 1 and 1 over k, as it was stated in the definition of these rational string, by definition is 1 over 1, and 1 over 1 multiplied by anything will be 1 over 1. So basically I'm just gathering all the pieces together, but in a different order. Same thing, m and 1, and 1 times n, so this will be m over n which is exactly what we wanted to prove, that this is equal to this. So we can reduce. So using the laws which we have introduced when this formalism was first presented, uh, the laws of what is the unit, 1 over 1, what is uh, an inverse number, k over 1 versus 1 over k, uh, all these were in this previous lecture when I introduced these 
uh, rational strings. So I'm using whatever was defined over there as the laws of transformation. And basically, that proves that we can reduce um, the rational string the same way as you used to think about reducing any rational uh, fraction. So there is nothing new here. However, what is important is that we have established this based on a relatively rigid foundation. OK, let's move on. Uh, next is um, addition. So far, I have not talked about operation of addition with uh, rational strings. Well, again, we have to define something, right? And uh, operation of addition is not really defined at all um, among these rational strings. But I have to define it in such a way that, well, it would be a, a, a nice definition which doesn't break any laws and it corresponds to whatever we intuitively think about addition of rational numbers. You know, this common denominator thing, and etc. So that's what I'm trying to approach right now. Um, okay, let's start with the point that um, all integer numbers are well mapped into rational numbers using this mapping. Any integer number corresponds to rational number of this type when the right hand side, right num right integer number in this re re rational string. Uh, string is one. Now, that means that if we want to build a nice theory which which looks reasonable, then m plus n should map into m plus n over 1, right? So m maps to m over 1, n maps to n over 1, and the, the reasonable definition would be that the sum will map into this particular rational number. So, what we actually um, define right now is the law of addition of certain rational numbers, primarily these two numbers. So instead of corresponding, I will put an equal sign. And this is the definition. So to add two numbers which have the same um, right denominator uh, equal to 1, I just have to add their nominators, left-hand numbers, and retain 1 in the, on the right-hand side. This is the definition. But now this is just the definition of numbers which have 1 as the denominator. Okay, how can we expand it to something else? Well, do you remember um, the very uh, nice distributive uh, law among the integer numbers? This is distributive law. Sum times sum number is the first uh, of, of these two times this multiplier plus the second one. So this is called the distributive law among the integer numbers. Obviously, I would like to introduce my rational arithmetic in such a way that nice laws which we had in integer numbers will be preserved, like the sum, for instance. So I will try to do the same here. If I have this type of equation, I will multiply both sides by some rational number, and I should actually have this distributive law observed. What it means is the following. If I will multiply both sides by um, 1 over k, so it will be like this, m over 1 plus n over 1 times 1 over k should be equal if all the laws are 
correctly defined, so I just took this equation and multiplied by, sorry, again, it should be over, by 1 over k. So if this is true, by definition, this should be true if we want our distributive law to be correct, right? And I have to put some extra parentheses around this, right? Okay. Now, distributive law says that I can multiply the first m over n by this, and that will be what? It will be m over k. So m over 1, according to distributive law, I'm multiplying the first uh, out of these two numbers by the factor, by the multiplier, plus the second law, n over 1 times 1 over k, by the definition of multiplication, is this. So the left part is this. What's the right part? Right part is this, right? m plus n times 1, 1 times k, so it's m plus n. So this is a definition of the addition of two numbers which have the same denominator. So this was the definition for uh, two numbers, the addition of two, two rational strings with 1 as the right-hand side, the denominator. But using the distributive law, we basically expanded this definition into uh, the definition of addition of any two numbers, any two rational strings with the same right-hand denominator. You just add the left-hand sides together and you retain KKK. You retain um, uh, the denominator, the right-hand side. So this is a definition, but definition, not just any definition, I can't put M, plus, m over k plus n over k equals, for instance, 2m two, two plus 10n over k. Because that would not be reasonable, then the distributive law would not hold. We would like everything to be nice, uh, defined, nicely defined, so our laws of arithmetic, which we used to use, would be, uh, would be held. So that's the right definition. Um, and now there is only one step to define addition of any two numbers. And that's how we will do it. If you remember, we started with the law of reduction. So if we have common multiplier between uh, left and right parts of, the, uh, of this number, we can reduce it. What it means is, if I have a over b, if I have to define a over b plus c over d, I can say that this is the same as common denominator, b times d. <clears throat> so by definition of, I mean, by, 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 by the fact that we have proved the reduction of this thing, I can say that instead of a, b, I can put a times d, b times d because it can be reduced by, by the multiplier, common multiplier d. So that's the same as a over b. Same thing here. But here I will uh, introduce the common multiplier d. So it will be b times c over b times d. So instead of this, I can write this, because it can be reduced by b. But now, lo and behold, <coughs> The right-hand sides are the same. So I can use this particular law, where m is a times g, n is b times c, and k is b times g. So it will be a times g plus b times c over b d, which defines operation of addition among rational strings, A over B and C over D, which 
exactly corresponds to your intuitive knowledge about rational numbers um, and uh, the law of uh, addition by looking for some common denominator. In this case, I just chose b times d if b is one denominator and d another, and b times d is the common denominator, obviously, and then multiplying correspondingly the left parts, a times d and b times c. Okay, so this is exactly corresponding to our uh, not so rigid, if you wish, definition of the rational numbers. Uh, well, but, you know, nevertheless, it's a basically a, a more formal introduction of rational strings, and uh, um, if people feel the necessity to put this more uh, formal and firm foundation uh, behind the number, just a little bit beyond their intuitive meaning, that's the one. There are others as well. This is just one of the things. All right, so we have covered addition. Multiplication was uh, done before when we introduced these rational strings. How about division and subtraction? And zero, basically, that's the only thing which remains. Let's start with zero. Um, rational zero is any number of this type. Z is any integer number, and this is zero. So any rational number with denominator not equal to zero, obviously, but numerator equal to, 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 to zero, plays the role of zero um, in rational numbers. How can I prove it? Now, what is zero? Zero is something if you add to any other rational number, result in that other rational number. So let's just add a over b plus um, zero over z is equal to a common denominator bz. So it will be az uh, a times z uh, plus zero times b over b z equals well, 0 times b is 0, so it's a times z over b times z. z can be reduced by, which we retain, results in a over b. As is supposed to be if we are adding 0. So, as I said, 0 over z plays in this formal rational strings the role of zero. And again, obviously, we all know that in our intuitive rational um, understanding, uh, zero over any number, zero in, in, in numerator and denominator not equal to zero, is zero. So that basically kind of introduce, <coughs> introduces this number zero and proves that the concept can be formalized relatively well. OK. Um, what's remaining? Subtraction and division. OK, that's simple. Obviously, we define these two operations as reverse to their counterparts. So to subtract a over b, minus c over d, In theory, what we have to receive is some kind of a number, x over y, in such a way that x over y plus c over d would result in a over b. So we have to define it in such a way, this x over z, that this equation holds. Now, from this equation, obviously, it's what? Um, um, x uh, times d over uh, sorry plus um, c times y 
over y times d. Common denominator y times d, x I multiply by d, and c I multiply by y. Right. So we have to have this to be equal to a over b. Now, as you understand, we would get exactly the same thing if I would do A over B plus minus C over D equals to X over Y. Because, again, this is an addition. So now we can multiply um, a times g um, minus c over uh, minus c times b over bg. So we will basically have transformed this particular equation um, into the same one which we had before, the same the same equation between x, g, c, y, and a and b, which basically uh, proves that to, to to subtract two numbers we can um, instead have addition of uh, another number where the numer numerator just changes the sign. Um, now, um, I probably would not do these calculations. They're kind of tedious and, uh, uh, and, and obvious. But if you will just uh, use the common denominator in this particular case, you will get exactly the same type of, uh, the same type of equality for, for x and y and a, b, c, and d. So that's for subtraction. How about division? Again, very similarly. You will substitute division with multiplication. So in this case, if this is division, what it means? It means basically that x over y times c over d should be equal to a over b. That's what divide actually means, right? So we have to define it in such a way that this is, this is a correct equation, which means now, according to the multiplication, it's x times c over y times d should be equal to a over b. Now, again, if we will change our original equation instead and put a over b multiplied by d over c, I'm reversing. In addition, I have to reverse the sign. In, um, in multiplication, I have to reverse numerator and denominator, obviously. Now, that actually should be equal to x, y. And again, if you will do all these multiplications, this and this would mean exactly the same thing. So that's the definition of division. Well, um, we have defined an object, which is a rational string, um, operations of multiplication and division, with 1 over 1 being uh, a unit for uh, multiplication, which retains the number as it was. We have defined addition and subtraction and the number 0. Uh, we have defined an operation of reduction of uh, rational strings. Well, that seems to basically complete the whole thing, except one little detail which I would like to... It's kind of a subtle detail, but, um, but still important. We know that um, numbers, let's say, 3 fifths and uh, 6 tenths are the same because they can be reduced one to each other. Um, now, among strings, we also talked about reduction. And now, what I believe makes sense 
um, is to slightly change our definition of the rational number. Rational number is not just any string of this type where a and b are any integer number. Um, I would actually like to have something like this. I multiply both a and b by the same factor, by the same multiplier. Um, I would like this, which is obviously equal to this one, um, not to be a, another rational number which is equal to the first one, but rather to be the same object. So I do not want, in the formalism which, which we are trying to build, I do not want to consider these to be two different, they are different strings, by the way, but I don't want them to be different uh, rational numbers. I would say that these are the same. So rational number is not just any string of this type, but a set of strings with this property. So A over B, string over B, and a times k over b times k, uh, k. Um, these are actually representations of the same rational number rather than two different objects which are equal to each other. Um, it, again, it's a little subtle, but if I will ask you what's the result of a division, one number or, or, or over another, by another, you will tell me, okay, this is that number. But then I will tell, but okay, how about if I will multiply numerator and denominator by, by, by 2, let's say? Well, you can say, well, this is the same number. But it, it's represented differently, right? So that's why I don't want to say that the result of division A uh, over B uh, over by, by, by C over D is a whole infinite set of different rational strings equal to each other. I'd like to say this is some rational number. So rational number is a whole set of strings, infinite set of strings, which are reducible to each other using the laws of reduction. Yes, I understand this is a little, um, again, subtle, um, and it's more of a formal rather than um, something which will um, introduce any um, real need in this, in this theory. But still, I would, I, I would prefer this to be defined this way, just to have a uniqueness of the rational number. So these are actually the same rational number. Well, that concludes our uh, lecture about the arithmetic of the rational numbers. Thank you.